Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. On today's feature, we will explore the award-winning unmanned combat aerial vehicle that was designed specifically for aircraft carrier-based operations. We will also get to know the men and women that play a significant role in the safe operation of the flight deck and the aircraft carrier as a whole. The Navy made PAX River history July 29th after it conducted the Naval Air Station's historic first flight of the X-47 Bravo Unmanned Combat Air System Demonstrator. The X-47B, a tailless unmanned aerial vehicle developed by Northrop Grumman, is part of the U.S. Navy's unmanned combat air system. It made its debut flight in 2011 three years after its prototype was rolled out from the Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California. It was designed with consideration of several prerequisites from the U.S. Navy, including robustness to withstand the corrosive elements of the saltwater environment and operable from an aircraft carrier. The Navy intended for the UAV to conduct reconnaissance missions and identify targets in the enemy's airspace. Top Navy officials are calling this week's launch of the unmanned X-47B from an aircraft carrier in the Atlantic Ocean a pivotal moment in naval aviation. They are designed for stealth and low observability by the same developer of the B-2 Spirit Bomber. The jet-powered unmanned aircraft measures 38 feet long and a wingspan of 62 feet wide that can be folded for operation on the limited space of the flight deck. The remotely operated aircraft is powered by a Pratt & Whitney engine that enables it to travel up to 40,000 feet, reaching a high subsonic speed of about Mach 0.45. It is also capable of carrying 4,500 pounds of munitions in its enclosed full-sized weapon bay. The computer-controlled UAV is fitted with an autonomous flight control system navigated by a hybrid vision-based global positioning system. With the flight path pre-programmed prior to its launch, the mission operator monitors the flight operation from the safety of the aircraft carrier base. By 2013, the capabilities of the X-47B were acknowledged when it won the 2013 Collier Trophy for Excellence in Aeronautic Technology and the 57th Annual Laureate Award in 2014 for the extraordinary achievements in aeronautics and propulsion. The credibility and capability of the X-47B went a step further in 2015 when it made aviation history as the first ever autonomous aerial refueling of an unmanned aircraft. Just like the conventional probe and drogue aerial refueling method, the receiving X-47B has to maneuver itself so that its refueling probe meets the drogue ahead. This momentous event unlocks the potentials of unmanned surveillance and reconnaissance systems that are much needed in the ever-changing warfare technology. The X-47B has indeed checked all the requirements of the U.S. Navy. It is robust, capable, and carrier operable. The X-47 represents, will continue that evolution of naval aviation and, and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. 
The aircraft carrier is the pillar of strength of aero-sea warfare of the U.S. Navy. As the air power base against the enemies, the aircraft carrier's seamless operation and the air wing it carries are meticulously coordinated from its nerve center. Known as the island, the 150-foot superstructure that rose from the flight deck was pioneered in 1923. Just below the island's top level is where the commanding officer of the aircraft carrier operates from. They are usually former Navy airplane pilots with personal understanding and experience of aircraft and flight deck operations. On top of one another almost. That's how I was. Indicate 135 RPM, sir. From what is known as the bridge, the commanding officer runs an army of skilled men and women to ensure the aircraft carrier remains safely afloat. This includes a helmsman that steers the vessel, a lee helmsman that controls the carrier's speed, support personnel, and the quartermaster of the watch that maintains, corrects, and prepares nautical charts and other publications. Carrier, strike group 10. Morning. Just above the bridge is where the primary flight control, or pry fly, is stationed. The air officer, also known as the air boss, together with their assistants, is responsible for all aircraft activity on the flight deck and aircraft within the five nautical mile radius from the carrier. With the panoramic view of the deck's operation and surrounding airspace, they ensure the aircraft are safely launched and recovered on the flight deck. Our primary mission here in Pryfly is to launch and recover aircraft. Um, it's a team effort here on the Ronald Reagan um, to make sure that everybody is moving around on the flight deck safely. It's very rewarding. At the end of the day, you know that it, the only way that it was done is because of the people that are here on the ship and in, in Pride Fly. The operation requires meticulous planning, coordination, and communication with the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center, located below the flight deck, and the landing signal officers at the end of the runway. The flight deck is the busiest and most dangerous during launch and recovery operations. Between flight taking off and landing are the functions that involve tight space, explosive materials, and time constraints. This is where the crew in the flight deck control and launch operations room synchronize the movements of not only the aircraft, but also the people operating on the flight deck. The Ouija board is one of the most critical tools in coordinating flight deck operations. About six feet long and two and a half feet wide, the Ouija board shows how and where the aircraft is parked on the flight deck to ensure any maintenance, refueling, or rearming of the aircraft can be performed. The system that has been used since World War II remains low-tech for a reason, to ensure the operation still can be carried out even when power is out during battle. The warfare technology is constantly evolving, and the navies all over the world are trying to keep abreast with the latest, cost-effective, and most efficient. A computerized system enables a more accurate and effective operation. But at the end of the day, it is the human factor that plays a vital role in capitalizing on the technology at hand. As Chinese military general Sun Tzu once said, tactics without strategy are the noise before defeat. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.